thank you so much for being on the show. Well, That's, thank you for having me. It is, it is an absolute honor to, to talk to you. I, I've read so much about you and your company. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much. I'm like, I said, I'm really honored. Well, I appreciate that. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I so tell you. For, for our, our readers who will be watching this, Mr. Jack is the man behind Vintage, Vintage Air. Um, you've, you started the company, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, In 1976. Where, where did it all come from? Uh, let's, let's just jump straight into it. I mean, that, that's, that's what we want to hear. The whole story of where it came from and how it became, came to be to where it is today. Yeah. Well, um, I, you know, I think it, it started, uh, it has to start, you know, I was a hot rodder. I, when I was just a kid, uh, when I was 13, I got a, a Model A Ford, uh, a little um, two-door sedan, found it in a, in a wrecking yard, you know, and uh, before we left the wrecking yard, we managed to get it to run, and, and so drove it home, and uh, that was kind of the start of it, I guess, and um, from there, I put a Mercury 255-inch uh, cubic inch Mercury V8 in it, flathead, and um, and uh, a used one was terrible, terrible condition. I mean, barely ran, but, but it, you know, it did the job. And uh, then as fast as I could, I got an overhead valve Pontiac put in it. And then from, from there, just worked on that car for many years, just changing things. You know, it's a hot mm -hmm. rod. So we were changing things. We were putting a new engine in it, or we would repaint the engine, or we would, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, but put better brakes on it, put something so uh and that's what i think really where it started and then um uh, as time i went in the military um uh after school went to school and, and after school i went in the military and then uh after i got and i always you know i told my mom when i was just a kid uh, and my dad was military too so he was gone a lot so <laughs> me and my mom went out looking for old cars a lot <laughs> but uh uh and I told her I, all I want to do is build car, uh, parts for hot rods when I was, when I got older, you know. So uh, it was kind of in my mind, and and so got out of the service and uh, and um, had to get a job to eat for a while, and then uh, looking started looking for things to do, and um, we um, I started an air conditioning company to to uh, repair and and. Um, install air conditioners and so on and um and then about uh, immediately started building my own air conditioning systems for an old car because i was a hot rodder and um, took that uh unit to the street rod nationals in 76 and um there was a, there was a guy there that had a had a booth but he didn't need the whole booth so i walk in and they don't have any booths left so he said, well, you can use half of my booth. <laughs> that was uh, Mr. Roadster, Jay Oberg. What? Jay, if you're out there. <laughs> yeah, but, and so, uh, and that was it. So we, the van, had the van with some air conditioning parts, unloaded it. And I mean, the people just started, you know, asking and, and you know, it's kind of never slowed down. Because, I mean, at, at that stage, I mean, majority, even, I mean, 60s cars and stuff never came with, with, with air in it at all. Um, you yeah, you not were the really. first. Not really. Not. Well, uh, the, the, the car makers were putting air conditioners in some of their cars, mm. you know. And so there were other people, you know, putting them in the new cars, but nobody really much except uh, in, the, in the old cars, except... You know, they had what we they everybody called knee knockers. It was just a little unit that screwed mm. to the bottom of the dashboard, and that those that's what everybody was doing. And um, so, uh, I uh, started selling those first, and uh, then immediately, as I said, designed a unit that was unique to the hot rods, and and that's when we uh, went to the Street Rod Nationals in. Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, I believe. Sheesh. And, and I mean, since then, yeah. I mean, you guys now, I mean, you have a range of products and stuff. Um, I, I went through to, through your website again, 
um, just before this. Um, and I mean, you guys cater for everything from from thirties, forties up uh, into sixties, seventies as well, if I'm not mistaken. Well, we do, and and what we don't really talk about much because it's not is we also build them for the new companies. Oh, we're, we're building the the air conditioner. We're building the air conditioners for the new Ford GT, the supercar that Ford makes. Oh, wow! And and. And we did it for the last group of cars that they made in that super, the, the, the Ford GT, the 2004 and five, we did those for them. Uh, and we're doing, we always are doing, uh, we're, I, I can't talk about a lot of some of those mm. projects really, they're kind of confidential, but, but we're doing some for some uh, high end European auto companies. And it's not, not a lot, about seven projects maybe is what we got going now for the new car guys. Mm. And, um, but that helps, you know, what I like about that is we do the, we don't do that for, you know, for the, really for the, we really do it to gain the technical expertise. We like the yeah. technology we gain when we do business with those guys. So that's kind of what, why we choose to get into that business a little bit. But so we don't go out and look for it, but then when they come to us, you know, if the project looks right for us, uh, we'll take it on. Sometimes we don't take it, you know, mm. sometimes we say, no, we, that's not our project, you know, we'll walk away from that one. But technology's so changed. We do, a, do those as well. No, I'm just, sorry for inter interdicting. Because technology's changed a lot. I mean, if it comes to, yeah. uh, from the original units, I mean, I, I used to, we used to laugh, my dad, um, in the early 90s, we, we had a, a Mercedes Benz, but the, the, the C100, uh, the, what's the two, uh, two, 200C, and my dad hated yeah. this car. Every time he had to pass a truck <laughs> on the freeway, he started putting aircon unit and radio, everything came off because it was too much drag on, on the motors back then. But, but the, I mean, yeah. Yeah, new units don't have that, that type of issues anymore. They, they don't pull as much power well, as they do in the used, uh, used to. Well, so a couple of things about that. I mean, it still uses X amount of power. You know, you're still mm. using the amount of work that requires X amount of power, but there's things that you can do. What we've learned to do is to, we can't reduce the horsepower consumption because that's over time, but what we mm. can do is we can get, reduce the torque loading uh, by um, using the right, by matching the parts very carefully mm. and using uh, the fans that get the heat off the condenser and things like that. We can reduce the torque load, the instant torque load, and so you don't feel it as much, but over time you're still using the power. But once you know, once the engine's up on its RPM range, mm. why it doesn't feel it anyway? It's not that much. It's uh, three or four uh, horsepower. No, you know, that's I mean that's, that's, that's absolutely unless you're running twelve yeah. horsepower. <laughs> yeah, if you're running twelve horsepower, you're in, then you need to put <laughs> then you need to put some pedals on there. To exactly. Help you out. Exactly. Um, <laughs> So, so your over your career, I mean, you you guys started in, in the golden age of riding. Um, you now, where, where the main development happening behind it, where people start, uh, where it it, the, it really started moving from a hobby more to a, a proper industry, if I uh, if I want to put it that way. How, how have you seen yeah. riding developed over? I mean, from from your perspective over over the years, I mean. Is it phenomenal how things have changed? Do you think the core is still there? I think the core is still there. I think what, I, what I've what i noticed, uh, it seems like a lot of the guys that I knew originally that were hot rodders that were going to the shows, because as you say, the first street rod nationals had, well, I don't know, I, I can't remember exactly, but about mm. 15, maybe 1,500 cars. Now they have, you know, the, and this has been a weird year, but typically they'll have maybe 12, the big vents will have 12,000 cars. So it's, it's a huge growth. Um, but a lot of the guys that were uh, there that I remember being around then, a lot of those guys actually found, found a way to get into the industry. So a lot of those guys became uh, the guys that built the industry of, mm. of the, of the, the high rod industry. And, uh, so a lot of those guys are still around, but I think it just, uh, you know, the, 
So your kids ride in the back of the car with you when you go to these things. So they get used to it. Then, then they get old enough. Maybe, you know, you help them get a car together and now they're going and then they got friends. And I think it just, I think it just builds. It's, um, it's just, uh, but, it, but it is pretty amazing to watch and see it happen. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it must be like you said, watching it every year it, as it's, the, the leaps and bounds that happened in the industry when it came to development. I mean, like products like yours, um, that, that just started changing the face and just the drivability in general of hot rods. I mean, your product took a weekend, especially for the guys living in the desert, for a weekend quick little run around to something that really can became, become a cruiser because you're not going to die of heat on the way on, on the way on the road, you know? Um, also from a channel. No, that's right. Yeah. The, you got that's more, right. Uh, no. Well, uh, what I was going to say is what we did when we, when I was in high school, you know, we didn't travel across country. We went to the drive-in and everybody would park at the drive-in uh, and get your hamburger mm -hmm. and your root beer or whatever you were doing. And everybody would hang out, but we didn't drive very far. We really didn't. I mean, once in a while, you, you know, I might drive, I can remember in those days, you know, I might drive 30, 40 miles somewhere, uh, cause, but you're not going to go, in those days, we just didn't go across country much. Mm. You would have runs and stuff. And so that change, that was a big change. In about 1970, when the Street Rod Nationals became, came on the scene, people started driving from all over the country to go there. And um, I think that was a big change. And when that happened, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, the wives, if, if you wanted your family to go with you, pretty hard to get them in a car that's hot, really yeah. hot. You know? I, I, I can just imagine when, when you had your booth the first few years, the amount of women that walked past, grabbed their husband <laughs> by the ear and went, you need this now. Okay. <laughs> I'm not driving back until this is in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you are so right. I mean, we noticed that right away. You know, it was like the guy was wanting to go over and look at the engine parts and maybe look at the wheels. And his wife had him, she said, you're not leaving here until we work this out. You know, and, and we learned early on. That's a very, that's funny that you mentioned that. But we learned very on that we often were talking to her in every other booth. They were talking to him. The, but in in our booth they were we were talking to her and she was a big part of that that yeah, that's that's very true uh, it's funny that you say that but that's <laughs> that is exactly what happened that's just that's exactly uh, what happened and I, I i talk about this from experience with with my dad i mean look we are the, the furthest we would have gone is like a thousand kilometers from from Joburg to cape town um in the hot rods when i was a kid and yeah it's no, no aircon, um, and, and something that's, and especially when you're, you're hitting something in the 30s and the 40s where, you know, your, your aerodynamics is as great as a brick, no air is coming in everywhere, and every little lever that Ford and Chevy and them came out with was open to try and suck as much air into the car, but not, nothing helped, right. you know. You always kept at least two or three T-shirts on the road trip so that every time you get out the car, <laughs> don't show the sweat patches. <laughs> absolutely, mm. absolutely. I don't know how hot it would have been in the summers down there, but hot, huh? Oh no! Look, if if you we've got the 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 Karoo desert and stuff here. Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, okay. I, I know our temperatures. We I think we're in Celsius. We we had like four uh, in the forties, forty five. Some some spaces, yeah. yeah. Um, it gets hot, yeah. and then it, some yeah. areas it's very humid. Um, yeah, it's, look, South Africa. I mean, Africa. Uh, <laughs> Africa's hot. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's what, that's. I mean, when 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 your product, when we start, I mean, I, look, I, I've had your product in the magazine so many times, uh, and we've had stories. Funny enough, um, a friend of mine, um, Alan, he he had a, a C1 Corvette built in the US, brought in, um, and the, the Reggie installed your product while it was there. And he was driving to R Street Art Nationals. Um, he did a two-day trip with his wife. 
and uh, the product something happened with a, I think it was a fuse or something that went and the aircon stopped working and he's his, yep. fi- his wife I think almost refused to get back into the car <laughs> and she didn't know <laughs> I like that story. <laughs> yeah, she uh, when that when they got to Cape Town, he actually had to go find someone to sort out the the the, the aircon system before they could get back and to drive back to back home again. Um, right. So your product, I mean, when when I started finding out through the magazine um, you know, more about your products and stuff, like I guess it, it really started changing because up until. Um, we found out uh, about vintage. Uh, the only options we had was going to go pull systems out of other cars. I mean, and we, right. we didn't have big V8 cars. We didn't have cars that had, um, you know, a big aircon units. So we, we were pulling aircon units out of BMWs, um, you know, Peugeots, yeah. and all this type of stuff. I, I think yeah. the ones that the guys tried to use the most, I think, was from the the old Renaults because that was electric. That's that wasn't draining any uh, power off of it. But I mean, uh, it became just a mission to to try and source it. I mean, till today, a lot of the most of the hot rods in South Africa don't run air. Um, mm-hmm. Funny enough, just because it became such a big problem to to try and install it. Mm-hmm. Um, we started, I, I'm, I need to check back. I know a few years back, we started running um, stories from our side to promote your product, to try and actually get the market to understand that there is something else out there. You know, there is an option. Hmm, hmm. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, I had a number of customers that came to my business here in San Antonio from South Africa. Uh, they made it i think they went to california first and then uh, before they went home they came over and yeah. visited i had a number of, of guys who did come from south africa by the by the business by the shop i i think it's a bunch it's a friends of mine that normally go across because they go do the power tour oh yeah i think that's right that is yeah right. yeah i think that's, they made you uh, um that, that's alan the guy i spoke to the board to see one um they've actually did a, a few mustangs and stuff they they i think they go obviously not this year but mostly they go every year. That's look. That, that's still one of my my bucket lists is to go do the power tour. Um, power tour, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Our, our average motor show, uh, or even our nationals, we we we're only hitting. How can I put it? I know there's more rods in South, There's more hot rods in the country, but it's just very hard to get guys over the last few years to get guys out to shows. So our shows aren't right. attracting as many people but at the same time our, our shows haven't it's it's not like you guys where you you guys have booths out and there's new technology coming out and you know you guys can talk to the riders and explain what's going on and new developments and stuff our shows unfortunately are still at the stage of everybody parks looks at cars and you know have a beer and then go home you know that's 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 the nationals on this side but they we haven't taken that but, but, step know, uh, into an industry section yet. I think, though, you you a lot of the when the, when it's formative and young like that. I think the passion is high. I think oh, there's very, a lot of passion. Yeah, you know, and, and that's that's important. And it's it's still the old the old way of you build what you can find. You know, yeah. uh, like you were saying, yeah. you know, you found something in the junkyard and, you know, you found another motor. We, we still have that. It's not, we, we obviously we do have the checkbook builds where, you know, cataloging, I want the, the crate motor here, import the, the, the height suspensions and all, and Ort Morrison's and this type of stuff. But the majority of the running is still that grassroots of, I found something and then my buddy had a, 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 a 350 Chevy motor laying around. So we put that in and, you know, I stole wheels or something else. Uh, another project that I had. And, you know, we, that's that's still the basis of riding in South Africa. It's that old school, which is the part that I still love. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's why you have, you know, you somebody has to, one of the guys in the group has to be a welder. One has to be a wire and can be able to do the wiring. One guy has to be able to tune the motor. You know, yeah. you get a group of guys and collectively that all, you know, you get enough guys to go, you can build a car, you know, complete, right? What, what is the, how it works. 
the one is the mad scientist that just always wants to add more power constantly you know <laughs> yeah that's right yeah well yeah and 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 i re, you know i so if we wanted an independent suspension as an example in the early days you had to go find a corvette you know mm. something like that you know and you pull the suspension out of it and then you figure out okay how am i going to make this fit in a 30 in a model a or a 32 ford you know yeah so, and that's and that that's still around. I mean, there's mm. plenty of that around, but I think more so, in, you know, like in where you are, I, uh, I think probably that's remains maybe the, the main way you have to do it. The, well, the, the, pickups mainly. Um, if, if guys are looking for running gear these days, um, yeah. they're more quickly taking over trucks. I mean, our, our, our pickups are much smaller than yours. Um, okay. you know, oh, we don't have the the big uh, F-150s and F-250s and everything like that. We we have the smaller ranges and stuff, but that that's still the only chassis you can find. So if you wanted a modern drivetrain, you know that that's your option is pick up. We call them buckies, but don't yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah. So the the mini truck guys, um, but your in your career, I mean, but you you've been involved in a lot of stuff. You just didn't just do that. I mean between for shows bonneville and all this type of stuff i mean you've been involved in the racing for for years am i right well yes and and kind of because hot rodders i think when hot riding started people they weren't sure whether they were racers or whether mm. they were street street guys you know yeah because it, it was you know it blended so much i mean the only place in texas that we had to be around fast you know hot rods was at the races at the drag races you know mm. so you would go out there and yeah, you were kind of, you weren't sure what you were. You were just building something to, you know, you get an old car and you fix it the way you want it. So it, it, but a lot of, and then half the time school, I ran in the, what they call a gas class, which was <gasps> right. You know, you had a gas. Yeah, it wasn't fast, but you know, <sighs> cause it was a street car. But if you put a V8 engine in an old car back then, that's all you could run in as in a gas class. So, so it was like. Did you probably have the proper nose in the air gas gas style, or were you already well, dropping the nose down? Well, and and in, in the first and early on with that car, the nose was down, and then and then we started raising the nose, and we raised the nose for a while. Then we learned how to transfer the weight so we could put the nose back down. Back down so again. Got the ladder bars and stuff. Yeah. So it was a process. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm going to go have to go Google and see if I can get photos or anything of these cars that you did. I yeah. love gases. We do not have one gasser in South Africa. <laughs> it breaks yeah. my heart. I still need to build one. Um, just so I can show that part of history, drag racing history from, from our side as well. Well, the gasser was an exciting car because, you know, they would, in those days, you had the dragsters and then the other exciting cars were the gassers. And, mm. and you know, you guy would have a 41, 1941 Willys Coupe or, a, oh. or an Anglia, mm. you know, and the, and they'd come off the line and then the wheels would come up in the air and it's pretty uh, exciting stuff, you know. Uh, the, the era of Hemi pretty, under glass and, and those cars, I mean, that... That, like I said, that to me, that was the golden age of riding. That 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 was yeah. uh, that laid the foundation for everything, everything moving forward. I mean, but well, people like you, um, you know, the Edelbrocks, everybody. I mean, you you guys made this industry. I mean, you you guys became the founders for for everything moving forward. Um, so we well, we, all, were... we all have to say thank you to you. Well. And, and 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 I had a generation, you know, we and we, uh, my group, uh, I was, uh, you know, I'm 73 right now. I don't know. So in, you know, I and, so when I was a kid, I was looking up at the Edelbrocks and mm -hmm. the the uh, Ed Iskandarian, who is there, Ed Iskandarian is still alive and yeah. and run, you know, and it's amazing. And uh, but those guys were the guys we looked to. You know, the Alex Exidius, as an example, mm -hmm. and those kind of guys, uh, those are the guys we look to because they were the guys that came back from World War II, you know, and um, and they they had a little extra money and they had a little extra time. So, yeah, and they were in and they were in Southern California, a lot of them. And they that's kind of they would go to the dry lakes and run up there and 
and that's kind of what got this hot riding thing going. And, and a lot of those guys, um, there are some of those guys still left and around. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, it's such a privilege to get to get to, to, to know them and, and get to talk to them sometimes. But then you, you look at guys like Gene Winfield and them as well. Gene and Winfield, you, yeah, you've got you've got that other side. Like you said, you you got the hot rod drag racing side, and then you had that customization guys, the Gene Winfields yep. and the Barris brothers, and that type of stuff, which is a yep. completely that set. I mean, I, I I always understood. I mean, hot rodding was is the f- start of all custom custom cars worldwide. Um, if a tuner guy in a Honda Civic talks to you, he needs to understand that his Honda Civic will not, would not have boost or body kits or anything if it wasn't for the running guys that started back in California. That's where everything came from. Um, that's how, that's how it looks. That's how it is in my head. I mean, a lot of racing, everything, drag racing, NASCAR, everything, everything started with that, with that. From that era, if I want to put it that way. Um, as far as hot running, I think you're absolutely. Yeah, and and now you've got guys like I mean, I, I'm still trying to get hold of Gene Winfield to, to see if I can get him on on the show, but that the level of the builds. I mean, I, I saw a documentary the other day with Ed Roth, and how the, how they're starting to find Ed Roth's cars because I mean he used to just sell them on to you know to build the next one. And now these cars are coming out, and never mind what money and stuff that goes for it, but just know that they're still out there. I mean, these yeah. timeless, these timeless machines that that were built, and the idea and the thought process and everything. It was it was so far ahead of everything else. You know? um, yeah, it's something that I feel sometimes is still slacking in in today's in today's time. You know, guys weren't meeting that creative levels that the guys had back then are pushing the envelope if you want to put it that way well those guys you know those guys fed us all as far as ideas and stuff we were looking in the magazines like you were saying and and Mm. and yeah you're gene winfield absolutely and you know gene was a little bit of a racer too you know he Mm. went to the dry lakes and raced the racer and stuff so he was one of those guys that kind of did it all you know uh but yeah those guys were the guys that really that was the the crucible those were the guys that where it just grew from you know and uh the tom medleys uh, yes stroker mcgurk tom medley Mm -hmm. and uh, all of those guys those were the guys that that where the spark came from i think and and you know and then a bunch of us i'm a little young i'm I'm a young i'm the next group the next yeah next generation and we were so inspired by those guys uh and and we if we wanted whatever they did, we thought that was pretty good. We'd want to do some of that. That's, you know? That still today with, with the magazine, you know, a lot of times people send photos in and you, you see they, they've tried to do a custom job on the car, you know, change, change the nose or change, change the And unfortunately, we, we live in a society with social media where people – like to break someone down fast or you know mock them for, mm. for something and i yeah I, I came up with the thing a while back where i wanted to say unfortunately i understand the process and i thought i can see the thought process there he was just lacking the skill of finishing it off if that makes any sense right you, you should yeah, never yeah. you should never break down anyone for trying some form of modification that he's done on the car because the thought process is there. The work is still there. He might be lacking in fabrication skills or a paint skill or something that just, that could have made it that, that next level, you know, completely way Mm -hmm. out. Um, but like I said, at least the love, the love is still there. We, so, um, also (laughs) the other one we had, uh, I've got a friend, uh, he lives in a small town, and every time we we do long motor shows, he drives by himself. Open car, open sides, um, the roof, doesn't matter how far, rain, snow, whatever it needs, comes through his ways. But he's a real farm, he's like a farm guy, and he always does it in shorts, jacket and a beanie, <laughs> but shorts. And we, we've gotten to shows, and he it's a completely home-built car. 
and mm. a lot of guys have always had critique of him in this car and the only thing that we normally turn around is i didn't see you drive 700 kilometers in the rain to be at a motor go. show absolutely. You know? absolutely. absolutely don't knock it until you've done it yeah <laughs> well and that's it and that's where this you know that's where it all starts you nobody knows anything when they start they have exactly. to learn and so they learn by doing and and the more you do you know sure it's not going to be that great <laughs> believe me the, the first things i did to my cars wasn't i mean you know all i can tell you is i got it ran and it got by but there were a lot of things that weren't that great <laughs> about it you know it's just the way it was exactly and, you, and then you, and then you learn you learn from that and say oh okay well I'll do it better. I'll do this next time and do it a little mm. different. But, but without taking that first jump, I mean, you you'll never get anywhere. And and none of us were born with these skills. We had to learn them. So, well, I, I take it it's like your company. I mean, I, I I saw on your website you guys are now. I mean, you guys are putting um, adding parts now for LS Motors, Coyote Motors, all this type of stuff for the guys that are doing motor swaps and this type of stuff. So it's a right. constant development that that needs to happen. I mean, and that's that's yeah. that's part of that's part of the heritage of of this industry, is that we might have it's might be it's old products with new ideas. Um, right. That constant development always has to happen, improving, making it better. Okay, now new motors and no, motors and. That brings me to a question. Do you guys work with the Fords and the Chevys and stuff when it comes to new tech? Like I said, you know that Chevy's going to drop a new LS motor in the next few months. It's going to be available for crate. Do you guys start working with them to see, okay, what what can you guys do to try and put applica your applications into it? In some cases, we do. It just, you know, in some cases, we do. We do. Um, as I say, we built some of the product for their new product line, mm. their cars, like this. But also, yeah, sometimes they reach out to us and they'll send us a motor and say, hey, we need a brack, we need a compressor mounting brack for this. Oh, wow. Uh, here's a motor. Yeah, here's a motor. Uh, see what you can do. And, and yeah, so yes. And that's kind of, uh, that's kind of how they support the aftermarket, you know. Uh, they can develop the they can uh, support the hot rod industry by doing things like that and i think that do they do that with a lot of guys that are in our you know in our business and then businesses like ours you know in the hot I rod business did not know that at all i mean i i've dealt with um roush um yeah because we've got roush yeah and i know the amount of development that roush does and i know that what 80 percent of what roush does they can't talk about either <laughs> whether it's military yeah. or, or car stuff or anything like that. Um, but I did not know that, that the guys like Ford and them actually reach out to the hot rod industry for, for development of products and stuff. Well, not, you know, obviously not for their product line of cars, of, but they're, of course. Trying to, they're mining to try yeah. to dig up stuff to support the hot rod industry because they, I think, you know, Ford had a high performance uh, uh, parts division. Mm. And uh, and so they were selling a lot of those parts to hot rodders. And so yeah, yeah if makes sense. if a new motor comes, and if they they develop a new motor at, and they 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 need to to develop parts to help them get in these cars, so they go to the they go to the guys I believe that that are in that business. I think the exactly. suspension guys do some of that too, and so on. But uh, yeah, we we work with with them, uh, uh, not all the time, but we do yeah. when they bring out something that that's. You know, when they've got something that looks like it'll work in our industry, the hot rod industry, then I think we meet them at the big shows like the SEMA show mm. and so on. And they will we'll either go by their booth or they'll come by our booth. And, yeah. You know, and then and that's how we do it. That, that brings me to the question. I, we found out now, obviously, um, we, we, I think Mr. Wade Kawasaki is going to be on the show tomorrow night to talk to us about oh, SEMA. Great, great. Um, great so, I mean, so SEMA's canceled. Uh, is is yes. that a big impact for you guys? Does is um for for the plans moving forward, new products that you guys were going to release or? I uh, no, I mean you know, it's, it's the SEMA show is a big show, huge mm -hmm. show, and we talk to a lot of people there, and it's a very important 
and shows, oh yes, I mean, it's an impact, but it's not really going to change what we're doing because we're working way out in advance, you know? Yeah. We're working on stuff that we want to introduce next year. We're working on now, you know. Mm. So, uh, but but you know, boy, <laughs> the SEMA show is important to us. I mean, just say that. And yeah. and uh, but and and uh, yeah, it's, it's think, important to us. It's, and I it's, think it's, we uh, just it's going to make a difference. But uh, but um, you know, it's time it, to get we'll creative. Do what we're doing. Yeah, it's what. It's time to get creative, you know. Look at yeah. look look at the gap, and go right. So how do we fill the void? How right. you know? Uh, uh, but exactly. every every, every exactly. problem is, is is a few a few steps away from a solution. If I want to put it that way, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I, like we we keep saying the 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 passion, the love behind it. The, yes, it it might. How can I put it? Those those companies will still reach out. The guys that wanted to speak to you uh, at SEMA, that was waiting for the scene for for the SEMA and stuff. I think that 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 reaching out will still be there. Everything will, everything still will still go on. It will just feel slower because it's not that big bang. You know, that's that, right. That is the SEMA. That is right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's Which might exactly not be right. a bad idea because I I mean look I I haven't been to SEMA. To, the, I was supposed to be there the, this year. Um. Every time over the last 13 years that I've had the Hot Rod magazine, something's happened to make sure I don't get there. Um, right. So maybe it's my fault that this has happened. I don't know. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but um, the, how can I put it? It's just, it will, everything, there's always, there's always a way. Um, and yeah. it, it just means that, like you said, you start looking at other avenues. What else is there? How do we do, how do we attach the market? How do we uh, direct those guys? But I think that, that things will move on. They always do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my my no, favorite. I, I... Sorry, my my favorite saying is the only constant thing in life is change. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um. There was something else I wanted to ask you. It's from a new product line. What 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 new did you guys have coming out? Um, or are you guys still keeping that under wraps? Well, some of the stuff we are, but we're we're constantly developed for uh, for new uh, vehicles. Um, gosh, what did we just do? We just did the. Uh, we're just finishing up the uh, six. The the 72 to, uh, oh gee, the Chevy pickup, the, oh yeah, the 72 to, uh, 78 maybe or, or around there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, 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 we did some additional, we had the kit for that, but we redid the kit and upgraded. Uh, have you guys started looking into the European market more, like the the classics, the, the MGs, MGBs, the Porsches, and and all? I mean, all those classics that are coming. The, the, there's that outlaw style coming into them, where guys are looking now towards modifications and stuff towards them. Have you guys ever started playing in that area? No, the E types. Well, <laughs> I have. Okay, so in since I've been in business, I have air conditioned all of those cars uh, over time. But mm -hmm. but we just were really. Uh, I did a kit for an E Type many years ago, but uh, um, we didn't ever really develop it as a kit uh, to the level that we are now because all, we were so busy just doing the muscle cars and the hot mm -hmm. rods that we just really didn't you know couldn't get to it. But but we just uh, we're working on one now. We're working on the uh, 911 Porsche. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Very yeah. very and nice. So we've been working with a lot of the guys in the country that that are really dialed into those cars, and and uh, we're developing a kit for that right now. And and uh, uh, I can't can't tell you a, a uh, lot about it, but but I'm telling you that we're we're working on that. Yeah. I, My I, daughter's I, one. My daughter's one of our engineers, and she's uh, oh, she wow. and another one are, are heading that up. So you guys are a full family family business, still. Right, right, right. We are. Uh, yeah. Um, 
I, I look forward to the press release on <laughs> the, the new parts and stuff that you guys are doing. <laughs> but I, I look after this, I'd like to talk to you guys um, and see how, how can we push your products a little bit more on this side um, okay. for, for South Africa and um, I, whoever we can speak to on that side to, to see what we can do and make, make it a little bit better known in, in the industry uh, from this side as well. Um, maybe get some, I don't know if you guys have some tutorials or anything that we can run on this side. Um, I was, I, I like educating people. Um, to me, that's, that's the best way forward in everything. Right. Uh, we, our website has a fair amount of information on it. Yeah. And, uh, that'd be the best way as far away mm -hmm. as, you know, we do, we do go out and do seminars. We do a lot of seminars, educational seminars. But we haven't gotten down as far as your way yet. So. Well, I, I was talking to some of the guys um, from Woolwood Breaks and some other brands and stuff, and I said maybe maybe we need to to pull a pull a little seminar together, get a bunch of products out from the, from the US, um, and come do a few days on this side so we can educate the market and you know see what what else is sitting on this side. Um, I, I I'd like. I, I think we're sitting at a brink where things are moving forward and guys are understanding. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe it's time we could do that. So I'm, I'm not going to keep you much. I know you're a, you're a busy man. Um, so I just wanted to say once again, thank you for, for being on the show. Uh, it's an absolute honor to talk to you. Um, and all well, the best. Here, Jeff. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And the same to you. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, talking to you, and uh, yeah, if, if we can help in any way uh, to uh, increase uh, the the exchange from your mm -hmm. area and our area, happy to do it. But uh, I really appreciate you asking me to come on the show, and hope uh, hope so. <laughs> hope you, hope we got something good out of this. No, no, definitely, definitely. I'm sure we're going to work something out. To quite great for this. And like I said, to me, it's about. <laughs> The, the more we get, the more people we can get in front of, the more guys can understand what, what is available. I, I think people just need to know what is actually out there. The the guy that's now sat and picked up a product, I mean, you guys have so, such a wide range of it. Um, not You guys have your systems for your universal kits and that type of stuff that's available. So it doesn't mean if your car, it doesn't say that your car's on the thing that your the product won't work. Um, so... Yeah. Great product, great company. So thank you so much for being on the show. All right. Thank you, bro. We really appreciate it. All right. You have a great day. Thanks. Thanks sir. Bye.